welcome to the presentation. In these videos, we will go through various practice questions on various topics to help in your preparation for the Canadian CDA exam. Uh, this will be based on the 2018 Diabetes Canada Clinical Practice Guidelines. And before we begin, don't forget to hit the subscribe button for more practice questions. Let's begin. In this video, we'll cover vascular protection. Question number one. Let's go through this together. So the patient is RL, is a 48-year-old female who has type 2 diabetes for the past six years. She's seeing her doctor today as part of a regular follow-up. The doctor reviews her current history and discusses with her whether additional treatment is needed at this time. Current medical history. So metformin, 500 milligram, three times a day. Glyburide, 5 milligram, once daily. Current A1C is 6.8%. And currently, there's no signs of any macrovascular complications at this time. So let's circle the key points from this question. So first off, 48-year-old, type 2 diabetic, past six years. Now, based on her current medical history, which of the following is the best course of action for vascular protection? Let's go through the four choices. So first one is adding aspirin, 81 milligram adding an ACE inhibitor or an ARB, add a statin or no course of action at this time. So let's look at the first one for, and see if we can narrow this down. So 81 milligram. Now remember with aspirin 81 milligram, 81 milligram, it's not routinely used for primary prevention of cardiovascular disease. There's just insufficient evidence. So we're going to rule this out. So next we have adding an ACE inhibitor or an ARB. So here's a little checklist. We'll go through this and I'll provide a reference afterwards as well. So who should receive an ACE inhibitor or an ARB? Does the person has clinical uh, cardiovascular disease? In this situation we see from her history, she doesn't. So that rules that one out. So we'll put an X beside it. Next, age 55 years with additional CV risk factors or end organ damage. As we can see from this, she doesn't fall in that category. So we're gonna rule that out. Next, microvascular complications. As we see from her history, no signs of microvascular complications at this time. So we're gonna rule that out. So we conclude that we're not gonna add an ACE inhibitor or an ARB at this time. We'll cross it out. Next act, next, um, next uh, choice. So we have add a statin. Here's a little checklist again. Who should receive a statin? So the people are those with clinical cardiovascular disease. Right now, from her history, that rules that out. So there's nothing there. Next, 40 years or older. Hmm. As we can see from the question, she's 40 years old. So that, let's give a little check mark there. Let's continue through and rule things out still. Macrovascular complication, as we saw yeah, from the question, there's nothing there. So we're going to rule that out. Diabetes greater than 15 years duration and uh, greater than 30 years of age. Uh, she is um, older than 30, but the duration of diabetes is only six years, as we see there. So we'll cross that out. And the other option is if um, the guidelines warrant therapy. Uh, so from this checklist, we already have the RN Sarah here. She is greater than 40 years of age. So she actually is eligible for adding a statin on. So from this, we can we know what our answer is. So it's adding a statin. Uh, and no course of action, we, always, we can rule that out as well already. For, for this question, the, good, the important reference to refer to is the chapter 23, Cardiovascular Protection in People with Diabetes from the Diabetes Canada Clinical Practice Guidelines 2018. Do re please refer to that and it'll give you the same layout of this checklist of uh, how to rule it out and what to be added on. Furthermore, to add to this, this is a very good reference to refer to. Clinical Practice Guidelines Quick Reference Guide. This is the 2020 edition. And for this question, you can also refer to this part right here. As you see right here, these are telling us what drugs need to be added based on the patient's um, condition. So for example, if this person actually had a previous heart attack or they have cardiac ischemia, peripheral arterial disease, then we see here that we'd be adding a statin, ACE inhibitor, uh, or an ARB, and aspirin. 
if, for example, our patient here, Mrs. Uh, RT, if RL, sorry, if she had macro microvascular complications, as we can see here, she'd be eligible for a statin plus an ACE inhibitor or an ARB. So please refer to this to, to help, it, help guide your learning as well. All right, let's go to the next question. All right, next question, number two. So this is still in regards to the previous patient, RL. So the question is, the following year, RL's doctor requests that she have an eye exam completed to check for any signs of retinopathy. The question is, how often should a person with type 2 diabetes have their eye exam completed? So the options provided are every five years, every two to three years, every one to two years, or as warranted by the doctor. So before we answer the question, let's look at when to initiate screening for retinopathy. So for a type 2 diabetic, we want to initiate screening at the time of diagnosis. Sorry if my writing is messy, but just bear with me. All right, so at the time of diagnosis, that's when we want to initiate screening in a type 2, a person with type 2 diabetes. If at the time of diagnosis, retinopathy is not present, then we want to screen every, every one to two years. All right, so our answer here is C every one to two years. Let's just be complete and go through type one diabetes screening as well. So when to initiate screening in a person with type one diabetes, we want to initiate screening five years after diagnosis. Diagnosis. In those greater than 15 years of age. Now at this stage, if there's no retinopathy present, then we want to screen every year after that, so annually. So remember, this, these actually, this is important to know. Please uh, check out chapter 30, Retinopathy of the Diabetes Canada Clinical Practice Guidelines, 2018. This is important to know. All right, let's go to the next question. All right, number three. So again, this is still in regards to our previous patient, RL. So the question is, a week later, RL follows up with her doctor about her eye exam. The doctor highlights that there were signs of retinopathy. Let's underline that. The doctor discusses options available with RL. So let's just summarize the patient so far. So, so far we know that she is 48 years old. And we know she's type 2 diabetic, type 2 diabetic. And for the past six years, we know she's on metformin. We know she's on glyburide. And her A1C is, A1C equals 6.8%. We know that much information about her. This is actually, all the information is in question one. And we know that in question one, a statin was added to her treatment. So we're just going to write down statin. And in question one, in the history, it mentioned no signs of macro, microvascular complications. So from this, we see signs of retinopathy. Remember, retinopathy is a microvascular complication. The microvascular complications uh, include, as we see here, retinopathy. It includes nephropathy. So that's affecting the kidneys. Retinopathy affects the eyes. And then we have neuropathy which affects the nerves all right so back to the question so doctor discusses the options available with rl so which of the following is the best course of action so what are we going to do now we need to add on another medication here possibly so we have the option of adding aspirin 81 milligram once daily we have the option of adding ramipril 10 milligram once daily and add almost certain 40 milligram once daily and uh no course of action at this time so let's look closely. Again, remember, aspirin, 81 milligram. When do you add this in? You're, we're not going to add it in. It's not routinely added in for primary uh, prevention of cardiovascular disease. And we know from her, her, her history that she doesn't have any previous uh, heart attack or any types of cardiovascular disease. So it's, uh, we're not going to be adding 81 milligram aspirin on. There's insufficient evidence to do that. So we'll leave that one out. Next, Ramapril, 10 milligram, once daily. 
Remember, Remipril is an ACE inhibitor. 10 mg once daily. Almost ARB, 40 mg once daily. So this is an ARB. So which one will we choose? Let's go back to our little checklist here. So who should receive an ACE inhibitor or an ARB? Clinical um, cardiovascular disease. We're going to mark that off again as no, because we know she doesn't have any uh, cardiovascular disease at this time. Age 55 years and uh, age 55, uh, 55 years or greater um, with additional cardiovascular risk factors or end organ damage. As we see here, ret retinopathy. But again, look at her age. She is 48 years of age. But remember here in the checklist, microvascular complications, and she has signs of retinopathy. So we are going to add an ACE inhibitor or ARB. We have two choices. So there is going to be a course of action. So we're going to rule out this, rule that one out. Now, which one are we going to choose? This is the important part here. We need to know and remember that when we need to add on an ACE inhibitor or an ARB, there are specific um, um, ACE inhibitors or ARBs that can be added on that have demonstrated vascular protection. And there are three that we should remember. The first one is, I will just go in this order, so telmosartan. Telmosartan, 80 milligram daily. So I'll put OD once daily. Remember, the strengths are the strengths are important. So the drug and the strength, these are the ones that have shown vascular protection. So first one is telmosartan. The next one we have is perondopril. Perondopril, 8 milligram once daily. So telmosartan, we have an ARB, perondopril, we have an ACE inhibitor. And finally, the last one is ramopril. And that is 10 milligram once daily. So what's our option here is B, Rampril, 10 milligram once daily. We're going to rule out Almosartan because that's not one of the ones that have shown um, vascular protection. Now we know the answer. Now here I'll show you one thing that comes in very handy is again our very useful quick reference guide, the clinical practice uh, guidelines 2020. This, this slide right here, this slide is very very, very useful. So let's look and let's narrow it down to this section right here. So we see here, does the patient have microvascular disease? So we have said yes, because she has retinopathy. And she's already on a statin, and we need to add an ACE inhibitor arm. So if you look in the fine print, very, very tiny, but you see the ones that the specific ACE inhibitors or ARBs that have shown vascular protection are Prondopril, 8 milligram once daily, your Ramipril, 10 milligram once daily and your telmos are an 80 milligram once daily. So these are the three that are important to know. So do, like, do uh, refer to this, um, to this chart. All right, that concludes the video. I hope you found this helpful. Give it a like or a thumbs up. And don't forget to hit the subscribe button for more videos like this. See you in the next one. Thanks for watching.